Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with an episode of Commander Cheapskate Game Reviews. This series will review various products related to the miniatures wargaming hobby, and on today's episode, we'll take a look at the last installment of Games Workshop's Necromunda Aranthe Succession series. This one is being Volume 3, The Ruins of Jardland. This is the actual very last installment of the Aranthe Succession campaign setting, which was the latest and probably the largest expansion to Necromunda since the game actually originally dropped. Now, the Aranthe Succession, of course, has been known for bringing new fighters and rules and new game mechanics to the camp uh, to the rule set of Necromunda as well, so that part is really cool. And on this video, we'll be doing a couple things. First of all, we'll be talking about the book's contents, so if you're very interested in what's inside of this book, uh, I will put timestamps down in the description box down below because we'll be going a little bit more of a deeper dive talking about those contents. So if there's something very specific you want to know what's inside the book, you can kind of click on the timestamps and navigate through it. Uh, just to give you guys an overall idea about what the contents of this book first of all we do have the thrilling conclusion to the Aranthian succession narrative so if you're interested in the fluff and the lore and the lore and the narrative lore of the campaign setting and the story and the the myth of Micromunda, this book does contain uh, the conclusion to that setting now I'm not much of a lore guy on this video on this channel I don't really do lore videos too much so I'm not gonna spoil anything I'm not gonna talk about it too much but just to let you know that it is in there if you are interested at the same time this book does contain rules for the third uh, part of the succession campaign campaign. So for those of you guys who have been playing the Aranthian Succession campaign setting all the way from the very first book, all from Sidrak Burning to the Vaults of Temenos to now the Ruins of Darland, there is a campaign that is developed for that. There's also seven new narrative scenarios available in this book as well. So if you want to play narrative scenarios, you can do that. Or if you just want to play these as normal scenarios to spice up your games in Necromunda, that's also available as well. And there's also rules for Vansar fighters as well as equipment. Same thing with Pal Knight Enforcer vehicle crews as well as vehicle options. We also have new information for Ironhead Squad Prospector vehicles as well as Hangarons, and we also have brand new Dramatis Personae which are available in this campaign setting as well. And I'll talk about those as we go through the book. Unfortunately, there is nothing new for House Delac in this book, which is kind of sad in a way. But at the same time though, it's not too bad though because we did get vehicle crew as well as vehicle weapon options and equi certain equipment options for vehicles for House Delac in the uh, Nicaragua Apocrypha uh, releases that have been showing up in Warhammer community, so you can access those if you want to get some more information for Delac. But for right now though, Delac is not receiving any love from the Randy Succession up to this point. So with that being said you guys, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, contents of the book by talking about the Succession Campaign Part 3. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the Secession Campaign. So this is the third part of that campaign series. So if you've been interested in playing in Aranthian Secession Campaign, there is a third part that you can do for this as well. And just like with all the other campaigns, you will have to pick a side on this one. You have to choose between the Imperial House being unaligned or being a House Aranthus. Now, depending on which side you choose, you do have various benefits to doing that. Now, the interesting thing about this, for example, if you decide to be unaligned for the first half of the campaign, you can remain so, but the second half of the campaign, you do have to pick a side, so that part is kind of interesting as well. For example, if you join the Imperial House, uh, if you roll a D6 and on a 4 plus, you can actually recruit a Dramatis Personae for free with no credit cost to your gang, but you'll have a limited number of guys you could use, which are basically Orin as well as Urson, Grimyarl. These are the two Grimyarl characters who are brothers who are Dramatis Personae in this campaign setting that are available in this book. And same thing with uh, Sibilrant, the uh, Sevos, the Infotech. He's also another special character you could also recruit for your gang for free. And at the same time, you also roll an additional D6 times 10 credits for your territories that can be added to your stash. That's an example of some things you can get from the Imperial House, for example. And each of the different sides have different things that they can actually choose from as well. At the same time, you have a brand new territory mechanic called Waypoints. And waypoints are supposed to be different locations throughout the Underhive, uh, the Palanite Cluster, as well as the Ash Waste that Lady Hera Helmore is trying to use in order to escape the situation taking place in the narrative. And so that's what you're actually fighting for in this one as well. So we have a brand new territory mechanic, which is also kind of cool. And of course, as always, you do have that typical seven week or seven cycle uh, campaign setting that they give you players. Uh, the first half takes place during the season of Ash. For those of you guys who are interested in that, you do have downtime with the typical rules of 250 credits to recruit as well as to promote fighters. And then the second half of the campaign also was known as the Season of Flames, where that will be taking place as well. At the same time, in the second half of the game, you do have what's called Helmwar's Flight, where basically if you roll on various waypoints, you can determine if you, she actually uses that waypoint in order to escape. If you do, you actually earn D3 reputation as well as additional credits for your gang as well. And just like always, there's a bunch of different triumphs that you have for the uh, that are available in this campaign setting. For example, there's one called Terror of the Waste, where if you have the gang with the highest gang rating, you could actually earn that triumph for your gang as well. So those 
mechanics are also built into this. So for those of you guys who are interested in doing so, um, that's available to you as well. Now at the same time, the book does introduce seven new narrative scenarios that you can use in your campaigns as well. Four of these battles take place in the Ash Waste, while the other three battles take place in the Underhive. And just like always with all the new scenarios coming out from the Aranthian Succession, you can either choose a play as a narrative scenario, which deal to details with the overall story of that uh, campaign setting, or you could actually just run them as normal uh, scenarios if you want to, to kind of spice up your games. The option is yours to choose from, so that part is really nice as well. Um, I've been noticing before, like with other supplements uh, up to this point, it's either been like a lot in the Ash Waste or a lot in the Under High, but not a good balance of both. This one actually has a really good balance of both, so that's one of the things I think is really nice about this campaign setting. So if you're looking for some new scenarios, this book could be one for you. Now let's go ahead and talk about the main draws of this book as well. For me specifically, it was the rules that are revolving around the new uh, Vansar rules that are available for this one as well. So just to give you guys some new information, uh, Vansar and Primes, Ogbex, as well as Tex can now take Grav Cutters. Uh, they're called Ashwaist Grav Cutters, what they're called now, but they're Grav Cutters all the same. And those characters can now take those Grav Cutters for 65 credits a piece, which is absolutely fantastic as well. At the same time, your mover characteristics also increase by two by using one of these Grav Cutters which is kind of cool as well. It does still use the anti-grav platform that is still available from the original grav cutter rules from the original uh, book of uh, the uh, the book for the uh, Vanstar gang that was available as well. You don't have the ability to actually do a ride by where you can actually hit people with your board. That one is not available for you guys, so it's a little bit not as good as the one available from the inner hive. But if you look away from mounting up your entire fighters on grav cutters, this is the supplement for you as well. At the same time, you don't have to worry about the hands-free rule. You can ignore the hands-full rule when you're riding these grab cutters. So you don't have to worry about limits on weapons or the type of weapons you can take, which is also kind of nice. And at the same time, you have the rule called the auto gyro stabilization, where you get a plus two modifier to initiative test in order for you to see if you can escape pinning by uh, standing back up again. So that part is really nice as well. So for those of you guys who want to live out your fantasies by having more Vansar fighters riding around on grab cutters, well, this one is for you. At the same time, Vansar also get new vehicle crew. These guys are called Technicas, what they're called, and they're also vehicle crews. They cost 40 fire credits apiece. Uh, for their stats, they have a 3 plus ballistic skill, as well as a 6 plus leadership, 7 plus cool willpower, as well as a 6 plus in intelligence. They also come with a gang fighter uh, rule with crew, and at the same time, they must be equipped with a vehicle. They have shooting, as well as driving, as their primary skills, and leadership, as well as savant, as their secondary skills. They can choose between custom vehicles, ridge runners, rock grinders, as well as wolf quads, as well as, well, as always. They're starting weapons are last pistols, last subcarbines, as well as plasma pistols, which are kind of nice. And at the same time, they also have access to filter plugs, photo goggles, as well as respirators. And at the same time, you also have now access to Vansar specific vehicle tactics, which you can now use, which is all kinds of amazing for the Vansar gangs. Now, the one that everyone's really looking forward to are the Vansar Ashways Arachna Rigs. Now, for a lot of people, they're wondering if these are prospect level fighters or these are vehicle crew fighters. In the end, these are actually just brutes is what they are. And you can have anywhere between one or two of these guys, depending on how you want to pay out. These cost 360 credits a piece. They have a five inch movement with four plus weapon skill and ballista skill, five strength and four toughness. They have three wounds, four plus initiative, two attacks. They also have five leadership, five cool, eight willpower, as well as five intelligence as well. The Arachna Rig is also armed with twin linked heavy last carpines as well as a rad gun and a plasma gun and two servo arms as well at the same time they're also equipped with heavy carry pest armor as well as arachna rig jump boosters we'll talk about those jump boosters here specifically in a little bit now you of course can replace one of your arms with a plasma gun with a flamer if you want to and that's going to cost you uh, 40 credits if you want and you can also replace your rad gun with a harpoon launcher for another credit 40 credits as well so if you want to have that additional equipment upgrade you could also have that for your gang which is kind of nice as well. You also have what's known as protective gear on this one, which basically kind of protects you from your own radphage weapons, so therefore uh, you get to ignore the radphage weapon trait, which is kind of nice. You also have the superior weapons array as well, which if you decide to take a shoot basic action, the player may make two shooting basic actions per turn, so you still have that as well. Uh, these guys automatically come with the hip shooting skill, and they also have shooting as their primary with brawn and ferocity as their secondaries. So like I mentioned before, these uh, new Arachna Rigs come with the Arachna Rig Jump Booster. So in case you want to know, if you decide to use a move action or a charge a double action, you get to add three inches to your movement characteristic when you do this for the duration of your action as well. You can also use up to half your movement to actually move between levels as well. So you can actually jump between different levels. And if you can't make the jump, you actually fall that many inches. And of course, you take fall damage from what you actually uh, didn't make. So it's kind of like a nice little combination of uh, Arachna Rigs with the uh, Orlok uh, Jump Boosters that you could also have as well, which 
is kind of interesting. Not to mention, if you decide to charge with this as well, you get a plus one modifier to each hit roll you make, as well as a plus one modifier to your strength characteristic and your close combat attacks as well. So these things are absolutely beast mode. And the nice thing about that is you get two up to two of these as well. And if I remember correctly, I believe you can buy these uh, two per box, which is really nice as well. And the nice thing about that, if you're a cheapskate like me, you can either use these guys as Ash Waste or Rackner Rigs, or you can use them for the original Rackner Rigs for the Underhive, which is also kind of cool as well. So another thing that's also available now is that Pal Knight Enforcers now have vehicle crews themselves, which is kind of crazy because I just did a video about uh, playing Pal Knight Enforcers the Wrath of Secession, so I guess I have to update that video because now we have vehicle crews. These guys are known as Pal Knight Rangers. They cost 60 credits uh, in order to recruit, and for their stats, they have 4 plus ballistic skills, 7 plus leadership, cool, willpower, as well as intelligence. Now they are specialists, which is actually kind of neat about these guys, so they must be equal to higher than the number of other fighters, including leadership champions in the game, but not counting hanging runs as well as rookies as well and for their skill access they have driving as their primary but their se second primary isn't shooting it's savant this time so they have savant for primary as well as driving for primary with leadership as well as shooting as secondary so they're actually one of the only few gangs that don't have shooting as a primary uh, for their vehicle crews which is also kind of interesting too now of course they have access to all the custom vehicles as always so that's not a big thing or also the standard template vehicles like the wolf quad as well as the ridge runners and the uh, rock grinders but the enforcers now have access to what's known as a forcer tauros venator for 130 credits so we'll talk about those a little bit later when we actually get to those rules they can also pick up auto pistols as well as stub guns as well as filter plugs photo goggles as well as respirators unfortunately for the pal Knight rangers though they do not have access to vehicle tactics up to this point i'm not sure if that was an oversight or the case may be but pal Knight forces do not have vehicle tactics what they do have access to, though, is the Enforcer Taurus Venator for 130 credits. Now, these are the same vehicles that were available from Forge World. I believe it was for the Elysiums, I believe is what they were called in Forge World. Uh, which is kind of interesting because I don't know if Forge World makes these miniatures anymore. So it might be kind of hard for you guys to find these if you want to buy these. Well, anyways, for their cost, 130 credits, they have 7-inch movement, 5 uh, toughness, uh, five side toughness, and 4 rear toughness. They have 3 hull points. They have a 5-plus for handling as well as a 4-plus save as well. They do have a weapons hard point, getting the crew operator as well as the all-around trait which is on the back of the vehicle as well it is wheeled they do have two body as well as three as uh, drive and three engine upgrades that you can put on this as well for the body upgrades you have a blade of armor crash cages reinforced armor as well as weapon stash for the drive upgrades you have emergency brakes powered steering redundant drive systems as well as tire claws for the engine upgrades you can actually take the archaeotech automatic reactor which is actually kind of interesting for this vehicle so you can put this thing on and make it hella fast they also have easy turnover engines as well as engine shells as well as glitch injection for their war gear, they could take booby trap fuel tanks, caltrop launchers, flare launchers, headlights, as well as kill switches. And for the weapons, they could choose either between a twin-linked uh, concussion cannon, so you do have that, which is absolutely kind of cool, as well as a twin-linked heavy stubber as well, so that part is kind of nice. The only issue I have with this vehicle is that even though they do have the rules for it, I don't think the miniatures are actually all that available and the ones that are available uh they can be quite pricey so that's the only problem with that as well now the interesting thing about this is that this does not have any spot for your crew to ride in so there if you want to put like a ride for a fighter to ride on this there's nothing from the hold on to so they will have to take initiative tests to see if they don't fall off so but at the same time though your rangers do have access to custom vehicles so there's also that you could also look forward to as well now, as for the Ironhead Pro Squat Prospectors, they do have access now to the Ironhead Squat Prospector Scalvian Explorator, which costs 265 credits as well. Uh, for its rules, it does have a 6-inch movement, 9 toughness for front, 8 for side, and 7 for rear. It's got 6 hold points with a 6-plus handling. It's got 3-plus for save as well. You have what's called the Ironhead Claw, which basically, if it collides with another object, it basically destroys it, and the vehicle does not suffer any damage, which is kind of nice. There's also transport beds on either side of the vehicle hull that you could also have as well as for the weapon hard points they do have two weapon hard points one is on the top of the vehicle uh, and one is on the iron head claw as well and the one that's actually crew operating the top has the all-around trait while the one in the front basically has a front arc as well it's also tracked which also makes it easier for it to move across difficult terrain it does have four body upgrade slots four drive upgrade slots as well as four engine upgrade slots as well now for your equipment loads you could also stick what's known as iron head container which costs 40 credits and we'll talk about that rule a little bit more here in detail 
For your body upgrades, you can take a blade of armor, crash cages, escape hatches, reinforced armor, as well as weapon stashes. For your drive upgrades, you have all wheel steering, as well as emergency brakes, powerful uh, powered steering, as well as reductant drive systems. For engine upgrades, you can take an Arteo Tech automatic uh, reactor, so you can make this thing wicked fast with archaic devices from the past, as well as an easy turnover engine, engine to shell, as well as plasma coil engines, so you can go really good fast on that one as well, as well as smoke vents. Now, for your weapons on this one, you have a choice between your special weapon, which could be an Iron Head Heavy Flamer, which would be great for a forward arcing weapon, or a Iron Head Heavy Stubber as well, so that part is kind of nice. And for your war gear, you have what's called booby traps, uh, fuel tanks, flare launchers, headlights, kill switches, as well as smoke launchers that you can take for this one as well. Now, the interesting thing about this, it does have special rules if you decide to take that cargo load. You do have the valuable cargo rule, which is very similar to the one that is available for the Cargo 8 Ridge Hauler, so you can use that too. You can also make a trading room with it, just like a Cargo 8 Ridge Hauler can as well. And you have a cargo care area, which, we, which states that an Ironhead Squad Prospector, Scalving Explorer, has an Ironhead container as a cargo bed, as a cargo load. Now, that Ironhead cargo container that we talked about has a special rule called Flow of Kims, and it says if making a trading action post at battle action, the trading post, uh, previously with an iron head squat prospector scalvian explorator equipped with an iron head container that any chemist purchased from the training post have their credits cost halved rounding up to the nearest five credits as well so you can actually get a lot of benefits with kims on this one i'm not sure what it is about these squat iron heads prospectors and why they need to use narcotics but uh, that's available to you which i guess consider drives really well especially if you have a narco lords uh, alliance and you also have like you know those 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 kim related perks uh skills with your with your characters so that's something that might be interesting if you want to go with that and probably one of the coolest guys we have now is the Claim Jumper for the Ironhead Prospectors. This is a Hanger Ons character, and this character costs 60 credits. Uh, they have a 4 inch movement, 3 plus weapon skill, 4 plus weapon skill. They have 3 strength, 4 toughness, 1 wound, 4 plus initiative with 2 attacks, 7 leadership, 6 cool, 6 willpower, as well as 5 intelligence. And these guys have the Seize the Prize special rule. Now, these guys are really amazing. In the post battle action sequence, you roll a d6, and on a roll of 5 up, you get to choose a territory controlled by your opponent and immediately becomes yours. That's why they're called a claim jumper. They steal territories away from your enemies. So if you really want to message your enemies and steal their territories, this might be the hanger on for you. Not to mention he's also part of the crew as well, which means that he will actually accompany the gang in the fight too. And when it comes to his equipment, he's armed with a gem extractor as well as an Ironhead auto pistol. He's got power fist as well as a power maul. So this guy is no slash. They're also uh, equipped with frag grenades as well as smoke grenades. They have a tech might auto surveyor as well as mesh armor. And they also have the uh, fearsome and iron jaw skills. So these guys are no slouches in close combat whatsoever. So that's the cool thing about these guys. Now the tech might auto surveyor is an exotic beast, but you can't purchase these guys because they come with the claim jumper they have a four inch movement four plus weapon skill four plus plus skill three strength and toughness one wound four initiative one attack they have eight leadership five cool six willpower as well as six intelligence and the reason why you're taking these little guys is because they have tech bypass and basically what that means is that whenever you pair a bait perform a loot uh, casket basic action uh, you get to re-roll determining what's inside of it which is actually kind of nice once you see what's inside of it you can re-roll the dice so that thing is amazing that way at the same time, it also has uh, what you call another set of skills as well. It has There's always another secret skill that's available to it. At the same time, they have cunning as a primary skill with agility as a secondary skill. They also come equipped with a drill as well as flak armor. So kind of a nice little, nice little, uh, little hanger on that you can actually get for your gang as well, which is extremely cool. And lastly, of course, we do have our Dramatis Personae who are available in this one as well. This is consists of Asungar, Lady of Ash, that is the character you guys saw. She has that huge halberd, as well as that giant grapple hawk that she also have as well. You also have the two Grimyarl brothers who are special characters for the Iron Squad Prospectors that we talked a little bit about earlier, as well as Cerberlat Sevos, the Infotech, which is basically a souped up Whisper Merchant as well. Now, I'm not going to go too much into the Dramatis Personae on this one. I'm actually going to do another video instead where I actually go through these fighters one by one and talk about their abilities but just to let you guys know they're actually pretty interesting with some of the rules that they have as well and the fact that depending on what side you're choosing to fight on in this campaign setting you actually recruit these guys for free so if you're looking for a way to include these dramatic resonated characters in your game without paying the credit costs that's available to you now you will have to pay for them if you want to play official anyways you will have to pay for them by buying the fourth roll exclusive miniatures if you want to personally i think that's a little bit pricey i would use proxies instead but that's just me because heck my name is commander cheapskate 
So in conclusion, the Ruins of Jarlin, should you buy it? In my opinion, it kind of depends on your situation. If you're one of those kind of players who are just playing Necromunda and you're just getting into it, you don't necessarily need to buy this supplement at all. Uh, this doesn't actually have any major uh, impact on normal campaign play or normal Necromunda play as well. So as long as you're okay with not getting some of the rules for like the Vansar, for example, uh, you really don't need to get this supplement all too much. You could actually just go ahead and play your normal games in Necromunda without having to get this if you don't want to. Um, the only people I would recommend getting this for is a couple reasons. One, if you're interested in continuing on with the Amanthia Succession, I would highly recommend you do it because you can get the third campaign setting rules as well. Or like if you were like me in my example, I purchased this book specifically for the new rules and equipment and uh, fighters for Vansar, the Palanite Enforcers, as well as Ironhead Prospectors. That was the reason why I purchased this book because I wanted those rules specifically. So for those of you guys who are looking for those supplements to add to your gangs, you can easily do that as well. Otherwise, though, if you're not picking this up for any impact of gangs or affected by this book, you can pretty much skip it if you wanted to. Now, with that being said, if you want to know how the narrative goes and you're actually interested in actually continuing on the campaign setting, then by all means, do so. It's a wonderful supplement. It's also, it is kind of pricey and it is going to take up some space if you decide to go physical. Personally, because of all the different books that have been coming out for Nick Grimwinda, I've been buying the digital copy so that way it doesn't take any shelf space and that way it's a little bit easier for me to navigate through them to find rules and information, but that's just me because that's the way I like to work as well so there you guys have it this is my overview of the aranthe succession ruins of jarland should you buy it as always please feel free to like comment and or subscribe your guys input is valuable to us as always also check us out on facebook instagram as well as blogger.com for all the latest greatest hobby news related to this channel that's good for this week guys we'll catch you guys next one peace out and stay classy